Hello everyone! This is Katie Colleen here. Welcome back Colleen clan! Or if you're new, then come join the family. Today we'll be talking about doing posing and modeling and photography with forearm crutches. And that means we are joined by our very special guest stars, Louise the left and Reginald the right. My forearm crutches! And they're all dressed up for the occasion. They have a nice set of forearm crutch covers on. If you want to know how to make these, please do check out my video on that. But that's not why we're here. Now before we really deep dive into this video, I would like to put a disclaimer out there. Do not ever do any of these poses if it puts you in physical harm, if it puts you at risk, if it makes you uncomfortable. Please, please, please do not do any of these poses if you think it will cause you pain, if it will make you uncomfortable to try them. This entire video is really just supposed to give you ideas and just help you kind of figure out what you want to do for yourself. So I don't want to see any comments saying that they tried to do a pose and they weren't comfortable with it, but Colleen said to and they broke their ankle. None of that, okay? <laughs> so with that disclaimer out of the way, we can get into this video. <laughs> So we have set the scene. You are a photographer and you are setting up a cosplay photo shoot with this super awesome person that uses super cool looking forearm crutches and it's amazing. Okay, so what are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna have to figure out a location. Now, when you're thinking about a location, you should be thinking about if it's accessible. And, <laughs> When I was able-bodied, I also kind of fell into the trap that I felt that no stairs equaled accessible. This is not the case. It's actually quite a bit more than that. So some main points to think about is, is your location next to parking? That means how much distance does this person have to walk to get from a seated position in a car or a bus, train, whatever, to where the location of the photo shoot actually is. So if you're doing a photo shoot in a desert or a forest or a lake, something like that, please be thinking about the closest parking. Bonus if they have disabled parking. You also need to be thinking about what the ground looks like in that distance from the car to the location. Is it concrete? Is it gravel? Maybe there are big rocks that are hard to step over. Uh, is it grass? Does it have potholes or divots? These are a lot of things that kind of add up to accessibility. Walking over gravel is a lot harder for me. It's a lot easier to trip or misstep and it's much harder to place my crutches. Whereas if it's concrete or asphalt, that is much smoother as a forearm crutch user to get to the location. There are a lot of things to just kind of consider and you can definitely reach out and ask the person using the forearm crutches if that's something they're comfortable doing or if they'd rather pick out a different location. I would also recommend bringing a camping chair. This is a huge lifesaver. So just bring a little camping chair that the person can sit in to take breaks. I did a photo shoot as the videographer, not as the model, not too long ago. And we actually brought a camping chair for me and it was like my little director's chair. And whenever we were looking through the photos or the footage, or we just wanted to kind of talk about what we wanted to do for the next pose, I would get to sit in my little camping chair and it really helped me get through the whole session without having too much pain. So now you have the location planned, you got everything ready. How are you going to interact with this person? <laughs> so I just wanted to throw out there a few like don'ts of interacting with someone who is using forearm crutches or really any disability. This can apply to a lot of situations. Please don't start the conversation off with what is wrong with you. I know you're curious. I know it seems really innocent. I know that this does not come from a place of malice, but this is not a good way to start a relationship. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you don't know this person and you're asking for their private medical information. And this may be somewhat traumatic to re-explain, especially if it's like your fifth time that day explaining it. I'll do photo shoots with quite a few different photographers at a con. They'll just kind of approach me on the con floor and say, hey, can I get some photos? And it really starts the photo shoot off weird if it goes something like, hey, can I get some photos? Yeah, of course. By the way, what's wrong with you? Why don't your legs work? 
Okay, well, I have a degenerative cartilage disorder and my cartilage is deteriorating and detaching from my bone and I'll probably never walk normally again. Oh, okay, um, let's get some pictures. I'm sorry. Like, it creates a really weird atmosphere and not only does it come off as pretty rude, especially if that person has a more traumatic backstory, it just puts a really awkward situation on it. What can you ask then? Please do ask things like, hey, I would like to shoot up on this hill. Are you comfortable walking there? Hey, do you need help carrying your bag to get there? So you can ask all of these things without knowing the person's disability or any of their private medical information and they'll probably be really happy that you asked. Another thing that is kind of a don't is please do not move or touch someone's mobility aids without permission. It is hard to describe the total fear that strikes my heart when I'm sitting and someone comes up and moves my crutches. Just you know, they need to get out of the way or whatever and then it's kind of going through my mind like, oh, my crutches are now over there. Do I feel comfortable walking to get my crutches? Do I think I can like navigate over to where my crutches are now? Maybe I should ask someone to bring my crutches back to me. Well, if they're over there, am I sure someone else won't think that they're someone else's and move them? What if someone moves them further and I can't walk to them? I don't want to lose sight of my mobility aids. Like. It gets so bad so quickly. So please just do not touch someone's mobility aids unless you ask permission. And if they give permission, that's completely fine. So those are just some things to kind of think about when you're at this photo shoot and how you really want to be initiating conversation and working with this person. Uh, it really just helps it get to a better start. <laughs> okay, now you've made it to the photo shoot. You really getting along, it's great, and you've gotten to where you're taking the photos. Let's get into some posing. This is the fun part. So this is where I was starting from. How can we make this pose better? Okay, well, first of all, all of my arms and my body are kind of stuck together in one big rectangle. It doesn't look very flattering because all of my limbs and everything are just stuck together. So how can we make this better? Well, we want to take up more space. Okay, so maybe we move the crutches out a little bit. This way you still have the full support of the crutches if you need them, but you're creating more negative space between your crutches and your body. So now if I stand like this, it looks a bit more flattering. You can actually make out the shape of my body and you can also see my arms and crutches further out. It looks more confident because it takes more space. Now something really important I learned is that when you are posing with crutches, you do not need to hold them like you would when you're walking. So when I'm walking with my crutches, I walk like this. Crutches always facing forward and to my sides to provide the best support. When I am posing for a photo, I am not walking. I am posing for a photo. So you do not have to have your crutches in a walking position. So let's go back to our wider position and we can turn a crutch. Okay, okay, I'm liking that. I do feel like the side profile of the crutch is much more flattering than the front profile at times. Okay, so let's say we move them both to the side like this. Okay, you can shift the weight if you're comfortable. Kind of add a little bit more intrigue, make it asymmetrical. You can also lean more to one side. And notice that I still can put my weight on both crutches. I'm not sacrificing that stability, but I'm creating a little bit more interest in the photography. Okay, you can also lean forward maybe. Okay, maybe lean backwards. Maybe from the side. So for this next set of pictures, I'm only going to have one crutch fully supported and the other one is not holding weight, but it's kind of at the ready like it is right now. So with my particular disability, my left side needs a lot more support than my right. So I'm going to always keep my left crutch on the ground and I'm gonna have my right crutch to play with. Well, we can just kind of hold the crutch with our right hand. And this creates this big wide negative space here. Yeah, I like that, that looks nice. And you can just kind of hold it. There are a few different ways you can hold the crutch. And then there are also some other ones that I really enjoy, 
where you just kind of hold your crutch like it's a sword. <laughs> so if you really look at the forearm crutch, this thing is super cool. This is like an extra long aluminum tonfa weapon, okay? This is really cool, and there's a lot of cool things we can do with crutches. One of my personal favorites is the crutch behind the head. I feel like this is kind of more like a ready to battle stance, you know? There are a lot of other sword-like poses you can do. Maybe in front. Maybe raising your crutch upward for the honor of gray school or off to battle, okay? Maybe to the side. Block. I kind of like straightforward if you get the right placing of the camera. But the really nice thing about all these poses is that for the most part your hand is still on the handle, the crutch is still in the right position, that if I feel a little bit uncomfortable, I can have both crutches again. Okay, let's move on to the next category. So let's have one crutch still supporting your weight. Again, I'm gonna keep the left because that side needs a little bit of extra support. And the right hand is still holding the crutch, but it's not really in a ready position. So we're not holding it at the handle like you would need to walk. But we still have the crutch in our hands. We can still get our crutch in place if we need to. It'll just take a little bit of extra time. So with these, you can hold the crutch in a lot of different ways. I really kind of like that pose too, where you're just kind of raising a crutch as a rallying cry or something. Okay, you can also kind of just hold it in whatever way you want. So sometimes I like to just go with one crutch. So if you're comfortable just having the support on one side, then you can also do this. Now the really great thing about posing with one crutch is now you have an entire hand free to emote with. And this is where I like to show off props, uh, capes, really anything that I have going with my cosplay or with the outfit, any props I want, I can now hold in my hands. The thing about using two forearm crutches is you cannot hold things. Welcome to my new mashup of Batgirl She-Ra. Okay, so say you have a prop. Now you can show it off. Having one crutch is also perfect for cape tosses. So if you have a cape or cloak of the sort, I like to have one side supported with my crutch and the other two throw the cape. And you can get some really cool pictures of this with some really cool effects. Okay, so what else can you do with just one crutch? Uh, there are a lot of things you can do with this hand. So sometimes I like to do the, ooh, I'm so strong, maybe on the hips, okay? Maybe presenting to the side, maybe play with the hair. Okay, so that is one crutch. Okay, so let's say that you don't wanna have your forearm crutches in every single picture. There are some other things you can do to safely support your weight while not having your crutches. So I'm gonna go grab a stool and I can use that to help me with the next set of poses. So if you don't wanna have crutches, stay. You can just kind of lean on this stool. Then you have the freedom to pose with both hands. Now I also really enjoy sitting, but having my forearm crutches still in the picture. Like I mentioned, forearm crutches just look really awesome. So sometimes I like to sit, but still have a crutch in my hand. So if you don't want the crutches in frame though, that is also completely fine. But you, maybe you still want a little bit of support just in case. If you wanna lean on a stool, or if you're comfortable, lean against a wall. I really like window ledges. Those are really fun too. If you wanna sit on the edge of a window, maybe there's a tree you can lean on or a rock formation. 
there are plenty of ways you can still be supportive if you don't want to have your crutches in every single photo. And on that note, I'd also like to mention that there are people who are ambulatory mobility aid users. Now this is a term I wasn't actually familiar with when I was able-bodied, so no shame if you don't know what it is. But here's where you can learn what it means. So an ambulatory mobility aid user is someone who needs mobility aid some of the time, but not all of the time. I just want to throw this out there because sometimes I walk without my crutches, so I need to go to the bathroom or something, and I need to walk across the hall. Sometimes I'll get up, and oh my goodness, I can still make it to the bathroom without my knees exploding. I just want to point this out because there's always people that like, when I set my crutches down and walk three feet to the bathroom, they're like, oh no, she must be faking it. They must be props. No. So what you have to consider with this is, while I can stand and walk for short periods of time, it gets very, very painful after a certain amount of time or doing certain activities. So while I can still walk across the hallway to the bathroom, walking out to the mailbox is another thing entirely. So if they decide that they don't want crutches at all and they want to stand, you don't need to make a big deal about it if that is what they truly are comfortable with and is safe for them. So whatever they want to go with, absolutely do. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!